I just kind of think that reading sucks. <sighs> I wonder if that's a hot take. Alright. We can do that. Hello and welcome back to Destiny Talks About Unpopular Book Opinions again because she has no other video ideas. <laughs> I do have video ideas, they just take time. I feel like that I can't take that time and there not be videos uploaded. So you guys are getting these videos. <laughs> Hello guys and welcome back. If you guys have never seen my face before, my name's Destiny and it's great to have you guys here. So we're starting off kind of juicy if this is your first video. And we're gonna do some unpopular book opinions. So on my bookstagram, I was like, hey, go ahead and give me your guys' unpopular book opinions. I screenshotted some. We're gonna discuss them. If I agree that they're unpopular, if I think that they're popular, what I think about them, my stance on the whole entire topic, that's what we're gonna do. That's how we're gonna get into it. So I'm just going to go to the photo out photo, photo, photo photo album on my phone that I have that is called unpopular book opinions and we're gonna scroll through these and we're gonna talk about them so we're gonna start off with the first one which is I don't know who's knocking at my door here we might as well talk about book of the month if you guys didn't know book of the month is a super popular and fast growing online book service for readers their mission is to help promote new and emerging authors and help readers find books that they love their team vets hundreds of books each month and gives you guys a choice of a curated selection of new and early release titles that way you guys can spend more time reading and less time researching also book of the month is completely risk-free you guys can skip any month at any time and you guys will not be charged and they have the best prices for new and release hardcover fiction in the game you guys can get your first book for just 9.99 if you guys use the code firework in all caps that is your first book for just 9.99 with the code firework now i love book of the month because i get this spectacular blue box as we've already seen and discussed on my doorstep and i have two amazing amazing book selections for this month we have Catherine center's new book which is one of my most hyped up book releases of the year this is hello stranger she is the same author of the bodyguard which was pretty popular last year love isn't blind it's just a little blurry all right this one guys you guys know i'm on a book buying ban so when i saw that book of the month had this one i was over the moon because i really wanted to buy it but i went on a book buying ban before this book came out so i'm so happy to have riley sager's new book the only one left this is a thriller about the main character and it's like a lizzie is it lizzie borden lizzie borden style murder sign me up and my favorite part is that you get a little is the little bookmark which it says in my villain era okay guys you guys can get your first book for just 9.99 with the code firework in all caps thank you so much book of the month for sponsoring today's video i cannot wait to get to reading these let's get into some unpopular opinions hold on hold on i need to get me some water a much needed water break because genuinely to do those shots for that i was running up and down the stairs very many times <laughs> getting some water also, we're trying a new energy drink today. I've never had Celsius. Well, I've had Celsius, but I've never had a Celsius that I like truly, truly like. So this is the uh, strawberry guava. I don't love sparkling things. Yep, don't love that. Anywho, let's see what the viewers have to say. <sighs> starting off strong. And I would say that this is starting off pretty strong. We have hard covers are better. 
um, better for what? Better to hold, better for your mental health. I don't really understand. I'm just kidding. This person is basically saying that they prefer hardcovers over paperbacks. And you know what? I'm not ever some person to fight about this because I think both have their strengths. I like hardcovers to annotate in. I just like to read them if I'm just reading a book. I'm not fully against hardbacks. I will pick a paperback though because I love to do the like bend thing. I love to crack book spines and but I'm not against a hardcover but I do think that I prefer a paperback. Sometimes skipping ahead in a book to see what happens to ease your anxiety is okay. I've never been against people saying that they skim certain parts of a book. Like if you're gonna tell me that you don't skim pages ever, I genuinely think that you're lying. Like I genuinely think that you're lying because here's the thing. Skimming, like I have done that before to literally like there is an anxious situation and I have said so many times I'm just a very anxious person and sometimes I just can't take that. So I skim until I get to the part where I can see that okay, like everything's good like for example when i read no exit by taylor adams last month i there was a point where i was worried about the dog so i literally started like skimming to make sure that the dog was going to be okay so i was like if if i have to read all these pages and something happens to this dog i don't think i can do it so i skimmed and i skimmed spice and like i skimmed certain parts of the book that just don't matter here's the thing that doesn't mean that you didn't read the book it's okay i can't dnf a book listen i am still like this but i used to be worse i think i've gotten a little bit better because think about this i mean it's a double edged short you spent your money on it you spent your hard earned money on a book so you want to finish it you want to give it the benefit of the, 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 the benefit of the doubt and i agree Okay, because I don't like wasting my money on a book that I don't like. I genuinely don't like it because I'm like, oh wow, I literally spent money on this and then I don't like it. Here's the thing, your time is more valuable. Okay, your time is so, so valuable. Am I gonna waste my time reading a book that I know I'm gonna hate? And then here's the thing, because I'm mad that I didn't like the book and I'm mad that I bought the book and now I'm mad that the book wasn't up to my liking, I'm gonna be even more negative upon the review because of all of these factors. So I've started to let myself DNF books. Sometimes I'll do a soft DNF. So what that means is, is I'm just not in the mood for this right now. I will pick this up at some point. I can tell I don't hate it, okay? But then there's the hard DNF where it's like, I know I'm never picking this book back up off the shelf, okay? It's never getting picked back up from where it's at. It's right where you left me, okay? Right where you left me. You left me no, you left me no choice but to stay here forever. That's what those books say. And that's fine. I do judge books by their covers. And if the cover isn't good, I'm afraid I'm not reading it. Literally me. Literally me. It is It is unfair. It is unfair to judge a book by its cover. But here's the thing. I just can't help but to do it. When I see this, I automatically want to buy it. Even if I hated this book, I just want this cover. Like, I want it. Okay? It's like a double-edged sword because I feel like it, within me judging books by their covers, am I missing out on great stories? Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. But like... I just, that's just something I gotta deal with, you know? I prefer reading on Kindle. I lately have been in my Kindle reading era. Usually I just love to snuggle up with the paperback. Okay, I love the feeling of just like, or, or a physical copy. I love reading a physical copy. I've always been like physical copy over Kindle. Tell me why lately, if a book is on Kindle Unlimited, I'm reading it on my Kindle. I, because I, I love, I love collecting books. That's another thing when people are like, if you don't, if you don't like, like, like a book, like why a book, do you keep it? Because I love to collect things. I love to hoard things. Like I, I, I've always been like that. I've just like always taken the things that I like and just hoard them. Like I just don't ever want to let go. I don't want to get out of my graspy little paws. I feel like I'm very unhinged right now. Am I like the Miley Cyrus meme? I felt like that. Like where it's like, Anyway, sorry guys. Oh my god, I'm all over the place. All over the place. Someone literally needs to sedate me. I love reading on a Kindle. And some people are like, why would you read it? Then just like get it on the Kindle. Because I want to collect things is what I was saying. Lately, if I'm like, oh, okay, I have this book on my TBR. Oh, but it's on Kindle Unlimited. I'm reading it on Kindle Unlimited. You literally can guarantee that. Unless I start to really like the book and then I want to annotate it. Then I will switch over the physical copy. If a book is thick, I also don't want to read it. It's just uncomfortable to hold a really, really thick book. How lazy am I? <laughs> it's really uncomfortable to hold a thick book when I'm reading it. But seriously, so I'll read it on my Kindle or even if it's not on Kindle Unlimited, I will literally buy the Kindle version and read it on the Kindle. Redeeming and Saving Six by Chloe Walsh. I had the physical copies of the book, but then I read them on my Kindle because like those books are thick in the font, y'all. 
Y'all know the font is small. Y'all know the font is small. Like, I can't do it. I have been in my Kindle reading era. I have really, really, really been doing it. Ever since I bought a new Kindle, I'm, like, loving to read on it. What a concept. I can't believe I bought a Kindle and I love to read on it. Dog earring a book is fine. Yes, and what about it? Because so many unpopular opinions I got, and this is genuinely an unpopular opinion. Because I feel like the popular opinion is that people hate dog earring books. Like, they're literally like, I can't believe that you dog eared a book. Like, da, da, da. Like, listen, it's fine. It's my book. Like, I understand. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. I will say this. You can dog ear your books, like your physical copies. They are yours. They belong to you. You spent your money on them or somebody gave them to you permanently to keep. They are your book, right? You can do whatever. I am a firm believer. Do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Rip the cover off for all I care. It's not my book. Am I going to do that? No. But you can do it if you want. I literally, I don't care. When people are like, oh my god, I can't believe that you dog eared a book. Okay fine whatever just don't do it to your books if somebody like lends you a book like if i looked at you guys and i was like here you guys can read the silent patient take great care of it please because i'm just lending you it and then i get this book back and the pages are all bent and i didn't do that and they're all written in and i didn't do that i would be like there's food stains there's like drink stains i would be livid i would simply be like you can keep that I will be getting a new copy. Hello, do not destroy other people's property. If you want to destroy your own property though, that's fine. Over annotated books are unreadable because it's distracting. Is what this means unre-readable? Like when you annotate a book, it's like unre-readable. It's like you annotate a book as you read it, so it would be upon the reread. I uh, it's it's weird because I also agree. Like, but when I over annotate a book, so for example, me rereading the Actar series, how I'm over annotating those books, I'm tabbing them, they're color coded, tabbed, and they have like a bunch of underlines and writing in it. It is because I want to time seal my thoughts and my feelings upon reading that series. Now, if I wanted to just reread the Akatar series, I would just reread like my just paperback copies of it. However, because they're overly annotated and because I know like what specific tabs mean, I do go back to my overly annotated copies to like talk about a book. So I know that if I pick up Beach Read by Emily Henry and it's my over annotated copy, I know that the pink is a sweet part. I love you. I love you too. And to think you promised you wouldn't fall in love with me. Like I know because it's when I want to go back and I want to say, oh wait, yeah, this quote, I can find it literally so easily because I know exactly where the quote's at. Like that's when I over annotate a book. That's what I do it for. But I do agree with you that they are kind of unreal readable like if I were to sit down and just like try to reread the book I wouldn't want to reread that copy it's just whatever but if I want to feel nostalgic and look at how I felt during that moment I'll reread it books that are on your TBR for a long period eventually get uninteresting unfortunately this is true which is why I also wanted to go on my book buying band because I feel like after a book sits on my TBR for a little bit and I forget that I bought it I then like kind of lose the interest to read it or at least I really 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 want to get through my physical TBR on the second half of 2020 23 because I just like I have fallen heavily into that where it's like a lot of books that I have bought have lost their like interest to me because it's been such a long time since I have seen it and been interested in it because here's the thing I feel like you see a book right you see like a TikTok or something you're like oh I really want to read it so then you buy it and then you forget about it because you're not getting reminded of wanting to read that book anymore. You know what I mean? So really, when I went on my book buying ban, I was like, I don't want to overconsume books because I don't want to keep running into this problem where I look at my bookshelves and I'm like, mm, I don't want to read that one because like, I just bought this book and it seems more interesting to me. Like, yeah, that's the problem, babe. I don't like annotating books. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. And I just talked about this, but here's the thing. I only like genuinely annotating, like tabbing and which I feel like annotating is whatever you want it to be whether like you underline in your books whether you underline and tab and do like the whole entire nine yards whatever you like to annotate is how you annotate i don't really enjoy annotating i don't i feel like it makes my like i feel like the experience is like it reminds me of school because i used to have to annotate books for school and I feel like that's just at the root of it. That's what it reminds me of. I only like to annotate a book when I am upon a reread. And then I want to like fully annotate a copy. Then I will do it. However, if I'm reading a book and then I'm really liking it, I will start to underline it. Like for example, when I was reading Fourth Wing and really started to like it, I would underline. But like you can't see any of the annotations from the outside of the copy. Books that are more than 360 pages are way too long. I will agree with you on specific things. Rom-coms, they do not need to be longer than 300 pages. They just simply don't because honestly, most of the time they are literally just kind of like copy and paste of like another rom-com. There's just not a like 
conflict or anything that should drag this book out over 300 pages thrillers i also am a firm believer in like let's build up the story but also like thrillers that are like 400 pages long i'm like why but then again i also disagree because like if i'm reading a book and i'm really liking the characters and i'm liking what's going on i will eat it up i would love if it was 500 pages long but like fantasy books I mean, yeah, they have to kind of be over 360 pages because you're building up a whole entire fantasy world, a whole entire conflict, like all of that stuff. I do not like colored organization of bookshelves. To me, it's so unorganized. If you guys have been around when I had my bookshelves color organized, which I liked visually, like I think visually it looks so good. And like, I don't care how people organize their bookshelves. If I'm being honest, if you want to color organize them, I think it looks visually appealing and I think it's cute. I remember when I like uploaded that bookshelf tour i was getting so much hate in the moment of people being like why would you color organize your shelves that is so dumb authors aren't together series aren't together like blah 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 like people were really like up in arms about it that was like a big reason why was because like people would be like oh like i love your the way your bookshelves look but then on the other hand i'd be getting a lot of comments that were like that is so dumb like how do you even organize those like they're by color babe that's how they're organized i'm a firm believer and let somebody do whatever the hell they want i literally don't care what your bookshelves look like if you think that they're cute i love that for you because everybody is different i think the color organized shelves are cute if that's okay but also a really big reason i did change my bookshelves is because it didn't make sense in my brain i'm somebody that likes genres together and authors and series together so i did it for the looks but like i ended up with like my books just sitting like i never like would put books back on the shelf or like put new books that i read on the shelf because it was just so like annoying and it really, every single time that I had to like go and try to organize them, it really messed with my brain that they weren't like with their other authors or with the series. But I will say that I think that color organized shelves are cute and I think that you should organize your shelves however you see fit for you. The book trope, Enemies to Lovers, gets old after a while. I kind of disagree with this. I eat up Enemies to Lovers only in fantasy though. I have said so many times that I don't think that Enemies to Lovers is a trope for like rom-com books. It's really just like general dislike to lovers. It's never that deep. I think I made a TikTok where it was like when enemies to lovers and like then like a workplace romance or something and I was like you're a regular everyday civilian act like it. Literally that TikTok sound is exactly how I would categorize like when a rom-com has enemies to lovers. You guys aren't from rival families trying to murder each other. You're an assassin sent to murder the other person. Like that is what's happening in fantasy. I will say I disagree if we're talking about fantasy because I feel like authors can do enemies to lovers in so many different ways. For example like that assassin trying to kill each other or you guys are like enemies or you guys are like superhero enemies or you guys are like rival families like there's so many different ways to put it that i feel like it doesn't ever get old with me and i eat it up every time i eat it up every time the throne of glass enemies to lovers hello hello the dance of thieves enemies to lovers hello oh my god it is it is the absolute best people are only starting to dislike coho because it's a trend now i don't know if it's because it's a trend or because genuinely people have just like uncovered some bad behavior that colleen hoover has done i don't recommend colleen hoover books anymore my tastes have changed so you won't see me like recommending colleen hoover books listening to an audiobook shouldn't count as books read this take i've seen a few times it's a it's a little odd it's a little odd to me if this is your opinion i'm not trying to make anybody feel bad first of all in a regard audiobooks are some people's only form of reading this it's like it's a very weird take especially from that point where it's like audiobooks and um braille are like some people's only type of reading so to shame people and be like that's not an actual book read just because you listen to it is a little odd i've literally seen this discussion so many times and it's just like a debate at this point but also i've literally even seen experts i don't know what their credibility is say that it's good to both read and listen to a book because sometimes it helps with your imagination to listen to a book and i 100 percent think it's literally the same thing i guess you can say i listened to this book versus like i read this book because if it does come down to the principle of it you did listen to the book but you still can have every single opinion as reading the book visually okay i just feel like it's not fair to go around and saying though like it doesn't count as a book read you didn't you can't really have an opinion on the book because you didn't read it type of thing audiobooks are 100 percent a form of reading a book it's just that you're listening to it versus visually looking at the words on a page they are both going into your brain the same exact way whether you're listening to it or you're reading the words on the paper you they're going into your mind you're literally like storing those words into your brain one way you're listening one way you're looking and it 100 percent to me counts as a book read if somebody said oh i listened to the audiobook i wouldn't be like oh so you can't have an opinion on it because you also 
literally know what happened in the book and you remember every single thing that happened just because you listened to it and didn't physically watch words on a paper it's the same the movie can be better than the book i also agree sometimes directors and producers and writers can add things to a movie that makes it better than the book people hate too much on books they don't like i also do notice this phenomenon on book talk specifically it's just sometimes i have a love dislike relationship with book talk because i feel like sometimes people will fuel negativity on book talk where I can do a wrap up and I will talk about how I didn't like a book and I will give reasoning like why I didn't like a book just because I didn't like it doesn't mean that somebody else isn't gonna like it doesn't mean that it's necessarily a bad book but I have seen this sometimes on booktube sometimes a lot on book talk where people will just hate a book and they will like make videos about it just drag it to filth and I am 100% everyone's entitled to their opinion but I like to just say like why I disliked a book like if there was a certain trope or certain writing or something happened in the book and I can feel strongly about that it's okay to feel strongly positively or negatively about a book but when it seems like you are just trying to be very outwardly hateful instead of being like yeah I don't like this book and this is why and when you make like multiple multiple videos and it just seems like there I don't know how to put it into words but it's a very specific type of video where people just kind of want to get on like a hate bandwagon and I just never think that that's necessarily cool for like a non bad thing that's happening in a book like say I just disliked hated the whisper man and I make like 5,000 videos on why I hate it so much and why I think the author sucks like it just is unneeded hate to put out there series are better than standalones I 100% agree I do like a good standalone but I also love to get into a series because I love to get unhealthily attached to characters i hate when books are told in third person i don't hate it but it's definitely not my favorite thing but then when i realize that the book is told in third person like sometimes i'll pick up a book and i don't really automatically off the bat realize like it doesn't just go into my brain but then when i realize that the book is in third person like once i get that moment it just irritates me throne on glass is better than akatar i don't think that this is an unpopular opinion i just think that akatar is more widely talked about than throne on glass however i do agree with you that i think that the plot and the characters and everything on throne of glass is just so unmatched it is genuinely unmatched the way that i felt reading that series unmatched characters over plot i will honestly agree with you in some senses because for example with the boys of tommen tommen i always forget which one it is series i think that that is a series for example that is character over plot where there's loosely a plot but it's more of a character study you're spending literally like thousand pages i think that's an over dramatic statement uh in total with these characters and it's really like just with them like there are some like plot lines but there's not a whole lot of a plot and that's fine and for example like with the addicted series i feel like there wasn't much of a plot other than just like here are this group of six people that are very close with each other and drama happens but i love spending time with them if i love the characters i liked ryle what okay guys those are all of the unpopular opinions that i have for you guys today i hope you guys enjoyed and had fun and we can sit down and talk about this i do want to say as a little closing statement if you disagree with me on any of these things that's fine i just think that everybody isn't entitled to their own opinion as long as it's not harmful never a harmful opinion i never ever like want to see any of that but these little opinions i feel are fun and easy to just share with each other and have some little friendly friendly discourse over it and thank you guys so much for watching today's video if you guys liked it you guys know what to do like comment subscribe all that youtube stuff that you guys know how to do and i will see you guys when i see ya peace